giant predators roam across most of the world's competitive ecosystems, and some are so successful that they can be found across multiple continents. In today's video, we'll be traveling around the world, taking a look at some of the most formidable predators on this planet, as we'll be ranking each of the seven continents by their largest land predator. Even though some semi-aquatic species are capable of hunting on land, I won't be including them in this video, so that means no crocodiles or alligators and no otters. I'll be ranking the predators based on their maximum weight in the wild, and I won't be including introduced and invasive animals. Without further ado, we can head over to our first continent, and unfortunately regular viewers will know where we're heading first. Antarctica has no native land predators, with all of its predators being reliant on the cold ocean that surrounds it. The leopard seal is one of the most intimidating pinnipeds in the world, and it's so good at hunting penguins and other marine creatures that it'll often play with its food. This is a trait that it shares with the deadliest predator in the region, the orca, and these cetaceans will even hunt the leopard seals themselves. I have been trying to come up with a form of this video where Antarctica can compete, and I have been listening to your suggestions. I was going to do a video based on flightless birds, but they're mostly a southern hemisphere thing. And I was going to do a video based on the largest pinnipeds, but the largest pinniped in the world is found across multiple continents. Let me know if you have any other suggestions down below, but for now Antarctica will remain as the punching bag in these videos. The lack of predators in Antarctica means that it slots in at a measly number 7, but at least we don't have to travel far to get to our next continent. Because Oceania is mostly made up of thousands of small islands and a few giant ones, there aren't a wide range of giant predators that can be found here. The smaller island nations are simply too small to support large land predators, but saltwater crocs will sometimes patrol their waters looking for an easy meal. New Zealand is famously devoid of any large or medium-sized native predators, which is why invasive species such as cats and stoats have caused so many extinctions here. Australia is often portrayed as an extremely dangerous country when it comes to wildlife, but in reality it's nowhere near as dangerous as some Asian countries. The biggest dangers to human life are found in its waters, and even though it has a relatively high number of venomous snakes and spiders, anti-venom is easy to come by and deaths are very rare. Nobody has been killed by a spider in Australia since 1979, and there were only two recorded snake bite fatalities in Australia in the whole of 2024. If you leave snakes alone, then they will likely leave you alone, but Australia was once home to giant land predators that you definitely have to keep an eye out for. The marsupial lion was around the same size as a modern-day lioness, but these unique mammals went extinct around 40,000 years ago. The Megalania was the largest member of the monitor lizard family, and it's believed to be the largest terrestrial lizard to have ever existed. This giant reptile would have looked very similar to the modern-day Komodo dragon, which is also thought to have originated in Australia. After the extinction of these giants, there was another, smaller native predator that reigned supreme for many years, but its story was cut short by the arrival of the Europeans. The thylacine was one of the most iconic Australian land predators, but it went extinct in 1936. It was a relatively large marsupial, with them being slightly larger than the coyote on average. Unfortunately, due to a number of human-related factors, they quickly vanished after the Europeans arrived, but near the end of their reign, they had to battle a larger land predator. The dingo is a bit of a controversial addition to this list, as some experts don't see them as truly native. They might be one of the first examples of an invasive species introduced by humans, as it's believed that they were brought to Australia by Asian seafarers around 4,000 years ago. Whether you see it as native or not, it's the largest land predator in Australia today, as it can reach a maximum weight of around 25 kilograms. The other Australian mammals that deserve a mention are the quolls and the Tasmanian devil, but Australia's land reptiles are much larger, such as the Australian scrub python and the parenti. The adaptable dingo slots Oceania in at number 6, but I wouldn't blame you if you believe that another Australian predator should take its place. South America's landscapes vary greatly from north to south, but there's one giant predator that can master almost all of these ecosystems. The cougar is one of the most widespread cats in the world, and it can be found in South America's humid rainforests and its arid open grasslands. It's the largest cat that isn't in the genus Panthera, and its size allows it to take down pretty much anything it wants to. 
The Amazon rainforest is one of the most biodiverse ecosystems in the world, so it makes sense that it's home to some of South America's largest predators. The green anacondas are true giants being the heaviest snakes in the world, but as they hunt almost exclusively in the water, we can't really count them as land predators. This means, of course, that we can't include giant river otters and the river dolphins, but there's another predator here that we can definitely include. The jaguar is an extremely powerful and bulky big cat, and it'll hunt many of the semi-aquatic creatures in its ecosystem. It's particularly fond of capybaras, but famously it'll also go after young anacondas and caiman. Because most of their prey are semi-aquatic, they'll often hunt in and around the water, but they also stalk their prey on land. If you believe most of the sources on this subject, then the jaguar is the largest land predator in South America, but there's a mountain mammal that has a much larger maximum weight. The spectacled bear is the last remaining short-faced bear, and it's found almost entirely in the Andes Mountains. These distinctive animals are more herbivorous than most other bears, with only around 5-7% to of their diet consisting of meat. These mammals are among the most sexually dimorphic bears, with males often being twice the size of females. Even though it's rare to find a bear of this size, they can reach a maximum weight of around 200 kilograms, which is around 42 kilograms heavier than the largest jaguar. For this reason, the spectacled bear slots South America in at number 5, and this is despite the fact that it doesn't really hunt very often. Africa's ecosystems are full of giant mammals, so it makes sense that there are plenty of animals that are also capable of hunting them. Cats often dominate its landscapes, but these species often don't get along. There are medium-sized cats such as servals and caracals that target smaller mammals, reptiles and birds, and then there are highly specialised cats such as cheetahs. The leopard is possibly the most adaptable cat in Africa, as it'll hunt a wide range of different animals of different sizes. Their stealth allows them to successfully hunt in a wide variety of ecosystems, and their power helps them to pull ungulates to the ground and to stash their bodies in trees. The African canines are often overlooked due to the dominance of the cats, and this is despite the fact that they are among the most distinctive canines on this planet. The Ethiopian wolf is the true master of the Ethiopian highlands, but tragically it's also one of the rarest canines in the world. The African wild dog is not only beautiful, as it also has one of the highest hunting success rates in Africa. Unfortunately, these dogs are also endangered, and this is mostly due to habitat loss and the vicious competition that they face. The spotted hyena is one of four hyena species that can be found in Africa, and even though they may look like they're a member of the canine family, hyenas are not closely related to canids and actually have their own family. Even though they are often portrayed as cowardly scavengers, they are actually very capable predators, and in some rare cases they'll even hunt African buffalo. The spotted hyena's natural enemy is the largest land predator in Africa, and it's the second largest cat in the world. Lions are the true kings of the African ecosystem, but the main reason that they sit on the throne is the fact that they live in large family groups. They are one of the only cats that are known to do this, and if they didn't, they could easily be picked off by other African mammals such as the aforementioned spotted hyena. They were once found over a much larger range, but today they have a scattered distribution across Africa and a small part of India. The African lion's size varies greatly across their range, but some of the largest specimens are found in Botswana and Tanzania, and they can reach a maximum weight of around 250 kilograms. This means that Africa and the African lion slot in at number 4, and for our next section we'll be heading north. Unlike Africa, Europe isn't really known for having a large number of large land predators, with some European countries being completely devoid of large predators altogether. In the UK, the largest land predator is the terrifying European badger, but thankfully not all of Europe has hunted its large predators to extinction. The wolverine isn't a giant, but like all mustelids, it's more powerful than it looks, and it's capable of taking down animals as large as moose. The Iberian lynx and the Eurasian lynx are the two largest cats that can be found here, with the Eurasian lynx being the largest lynx in the world. Across some parts of the continent, these elusive cats are apex predators, but in others they still have to face an iconic duo. The grey wolf is found over large parts of the northern hemisphere, but it's been largely eradicated in Europe. 
Because they will sometimes prey on livestock, they have been persecuted by farmers for hundreds of years. But thankfully, there are some ways that wolves and farmers can coexist. In places such as Portugal, farmers and wolves have coexisted for centuries, and this is all thanks to well-trained dogs that protect the livestock. The wolves have mostly learnt not to go for the sheep because of the danger of being attacked by dogs, and the farmers benefit from having them around as they feed on the deer and boar that feed on their crops. Another animal that's had a similar treatment is the brown bear, and this giant has a few subspecies across Europe. The largest subspecies on the continent is the Eurasian brown bear, which can also be found over large parts of Asia. This bear is not as aggressive as the brown bears in North America and East Asia, but they have been known to attack humans from time to time. It's not only humans that have learnt to coexist with wolves, as the Eurasian brown bear and other brown bears also coexist with these canines across their range. These two predators still have strongholds in places such as Finland, and they are often spotted interacting with one another. The Eurasian brown bear is larger than any African predator, as they have a maximum weight of around 650 kilograms. The bulky Eurasian brown bear slots Europe in at third place, and for our next section we'll head east to the largest continent in the world. Asia shares many of its large predators with Africa and Europe, including wolves, leopards and even lions. Despite this, it still has plenty of large predators of its own, and many of these predators are reptiles. Asia is home to more snakes than any other continent, and some of these reptiles are among the largest in the world. Even though giant pythons such as the Burmese python are fully capable of claiming human lives, it's normally the smaller venomous snakes that are the deadliest to humans. If you head over to Indonesia then you can find the largest living lizard, and it terrorises many of the animals that it shares its islands with. The Komodo dragon is the largest living venomous animal, but thankfully its venom isn't very toxic. It mostly uses its size and power to take down its prey, and they can weigh as much as an adult male black bear. Asia also has plenty of endemic cats that dominate its landscapes, with one of them being the extremely elusive and agile snow leopard. These cats are true masters of mountainous habitats, and they will often risk their lives by launching themselves at wild sheep and goats. The snow leopard's closest living relative is the mighty tiger, which is the largest living cat in the world. Today, tigers have a scattered distribution across Asia, with them being completely eradicated across much of their previous range. The tigers living on the smaller islands in Southeast Asia usually have a smaller maximum size, whereas the tigers in India are usually a lot larger. To find the largest tigers in the world, you'll have to head to this little area here, as this is where the Siberian tiger is found. The Siberian tiger is not a species or even a subspecies of tiger, as there is only one living tiger species. Instead, it's considered to be a population, and it's slightly larger than the tigers further south. The largest male Siberian tigers can weigh up to 305 kilograms, which is around 40 kilograms heavier than the largest ever mountain gorilla on record. These giant cats can take down pretty much anything in their path, but even these mammals are dwarfed by the largest predator in Asia. The bears of Asia come in many different shapes and sizes, with the sun bear being the smallest bear in the world, and the Kamchatka brown bear being one of the largest. Like the Siberian tiger, this bear is found in the cold Far East, and it lives a very similar life to the brown bears of North America. They mostly feed on vegetation and salmon, and this diet allows them to reach monstrous sizes. The Kamchatka brown bears can reach a maximum weight of around 685 kilograms, with some experts believing that they can get even larger. These bears are the second largest subspecies of brown bear, and they slot Asia in at a close number two. North America shares a lot of its species with Eurasia as they were once connected, and it also shares a few with South America as they are currently connected. This is why you'll find jaguars, wolves, cougars and wolverines here, but North America also has a few large predators of its own. The American black bear has the largest population of any bear, with estimates lying between 800,000 and 900,000 bears. They differ greatly in size and appearance across their range, with some being very brown, and some having a high chance of being white. In places such as California, they have weight similar to that of humans, but bears shot in 1972 and 1921 were claimed to have weighed more than 400 kilograms. 
Giants of this size are extremely rare, and they're often dwarfed by the brown bears on the continent. There are quite a few different brown bear subspecies in North America, with the most famous example being the grizzly bear. Even though these bears are pretty formidable animals, they aren't as large as the Kamchatka brown bears, and they aren't as large as the Kodiak bear. This bear is found on the Kodiak archipelago, and it's believed to be closely related to the Kamchatka brown bear. These bears have a greater tendency to gather in large groups, usually during salmon runs and when whale carcasses wash up on beaches. They have developed complex communications to help minimise fatal interactions, and because of their size it's easy for them to kill one another if they wish to. The Kodiak bear maxes out at around 750 kilograms, and at this size they even rival the polar bear. On that subject, I'm sure many of you are already questioning why the polar bear didn't feature in this video, and that's because it's actually considered to be a marine mammal. If I did include it, then three continents would be joint first, so I think it made sense not to include it. So because of this, the Kodiak bear and North America take the top spot, and I'm sure you wouldn't want to meet one in the wild. If you have any other suggestions for videos such as these, then feel free to let me know down below. But for now, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.